Many are the tales told of doomed voyages and great treasure ships claimed by the jaws of the Diamond Shoals, known to sailors as the graveyard of the Atlantic. Schooners, merchant vessels, treasure ships, pirates, all were lost to the great diamond teeth of the barrier islands of North Carolina. But none perhaps are so well known, nor so well documented, as the case of the flaming ship of Ocracoke Island. Even to this day, on the dark light of the first full moon of September, people claim to see a green light passing across the horizon, before it vanishes in a flash as the sun rises over the horizon. In 1639, under the reign of Queen Anne, 10,000 German Palatines, fleeing the ravages of Louis XIV's failed campaign, rushed into London up the beautiful Rhine River. However, London would not bear their weight, and so they were sent across the sea to the colonies under the watchful eye of Baron Christoph de Graffenried, a Swiss baron. They would be the Queen's subjects in the New World, in a place that was just now becoming English territory. These Germans had nothing but the clothes on their back and the few coppers they had managed to grab as they ran from their burning homes. The journey was hard, and the territory harder, but these Germans made a life there and began to thrive. Several years later, another group of German Palatines, whose fortunes and wealth were much greater, but fortunes in life were much less, took the voyage across the sea, bringing with them great sacks and chests of gold amassed over years of service to the crown. They hid these in brown haversacks under their beds, so they would look just as poor as the other palatines that had crossed the sea before. However, when they made port at Plymouth, North Carolina, they smelled the food and heard the calls of the people from the shore, telling them to come in, sample our wares, sleep, your journey is over. And they became so excited at the prospect of a new life that they rushed up on deck, children running back and forth, playing games, and generally fouling up the crew's workings. Unfortunately, in their haste to see their new land, they brought with them all of their jewels and all of their gold. And when the captain saw this, a darkness began to twist in his heart. For the captain had been a pirate, recently become a privateer to the crown. But old habits die hard, and when the glittering gold touched his eye, his old habits reared their ugly head. He called his crew into his chambers, and it did not take them much time to turn to his side. They emerged with smiles on their faces, telling everyone, go below deck. We cannot take any ships to the mainland this day. The, the temperature isn't right. The, the tides are all wrong. And the Palatines, who barely had a grasp of the language, and even more were excited just to see land, complied, even though they had even that day seen the captain turn away several longboats to land. That night, while just a few Palantinians remained on deck, three strong men with great stout ropes, stole behind them, and strangled the life out of every German on deck, while the rest of the crew, with sharp, cruel daggers, quietly and methodically slit the throat of every man, woman, and child sleeping in the cabins. They gathered up the gold, piled it onto their longboats, and began to row away, but first, they wanted to make sure their crime would never be discovered. So they smashed the great chests with hammers, took the haversacks and covered it over, poured oil and pitch on top, and set the ship ablaze. A great green light began to glow as the oiled sails caught fire and the ship stalled in the water. The captain and the sailor knew they would get away scot-free, but a strange chill began to creep up their spines, and as they chanced to look over their shoulder at the ship, they saw the great schooner ships, sails alight in the breeze, bearing down on them with ruthless efficiency. The sailors did not know how this was possible. There was no wind that could move a ship that large, and even if it was, the sails were all but destroyed. But yet the ship came on, picking up speed as it approached. The men paddled as much as they could, but the gold weighed their small ships down 
and it was not long before the great schooner turned their longboats beneath its keel. To a man they were drowned, and to a piece the gold was lost to the shifting sands. Its grisly work done, the ship seemed to turn towards the horizon and into the rising sun before it vanished from sight. To this day, if you go to Ocracoke Island under the dark of the new moon on the 1st of September, you will see a green light cross from west to east as it vanishes in a great green flash into the rising sun. And if you listen very closely, you will hear on the wind the cries of people whose lives were stolen and the angry shouts of the greedy men dragged to the ocean depths.